Welcome to Talk Travel with Heather Tate, North Mississippi's podcast for savvy travelers. Talk Travel with Heather Tate is a weekly podcast that airs every Monday on the Shark 102.3 FM radio station based in Ripley, Mississippi, and is then released as a podcast. Travel advisor and travel enthusiast Heather Tate of Whimsical Destinations gives listeners expert travel tips curated through the years of personal and professional experience. By clicking subscribe, you'll have a new travel tip to add to your collection delivered to your podcast library every Monday. Talk Travel with Heather Tate is brought to you by Sunbear Studio. Sunbear Studio is a boutique recording studio in the heart of Ripley, Mississippi. When you record with us at Sunbear Studio, we can mix, master, register, and publish your music, your podcast, or your family story. Email us when you're ready at sunbear at jc.media. This program was recorded at Sun Bear Studio in Ripley, Mississippi. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi travelers. This is Heather with Talk Travel with Heather Tate, and I'm so excited to share my adventures and tried and true tips with you. Whether you are also a seasoned traveler, a hopeful traveler, or currently an armchair traveler, meaning you're going to follow along with us from home for now. This is our 104th episode of Talk Travel with Heather Tate. And I'm really excited to talk to you about this week because it's something very special to me. And it is about taking an only child trip. Now, I have recently had several clients take an only child trip. I'm not meaning that you only have one child and you're traveling necessarily, right? Well, if you do, then that every trip can be an only child trip. But I'm especially meaning if you have multiple children, how you can single one out at a time to make a trip all about them, to make it a special, memorable occasion. So this can be for many reasons, Birthdays, especially a big milestone birthday, 12, 16, 18, 21. Graduations, this has been very popular, especially this year, to have an only child trip for a graduation. Celebrating a new career. I actually have a mother and daughter traveling right now where they're celebrating the adult daughter with a a brand new career starting out and they went on a trip together. It could be for Father's Day or Mother's Day. During Father's Day this past year, I had a father-daughter travel together, just the two of them, to Beaches, Turks, and Caicos. It could be a milestone, right, for many different reasons. Maybe the child um, is you know, just got accepted to to med school. Or maybe it could be like you have an adult child who is going to be getting married, but a mother and daughter want to take a last trip together before the daughter is married. Maybe one child, one of the, one sibling is at a camp of some kind and the other child's going to be at home that week and they're feeling a little left out. That could be a great time to do a trip, just the two of you or even both parents and the child. So lots of different reasons to do an only child trip. Where are some places you could go. Beaches Turks and Caicos, Beaches Negril, Beaches Ocho Rios, Coconut Bay, and St. Lucia. These four are my most popular for my families that are wanting to do an only child trip at an all-inclusive in the Caribbean. Um, Jamaica has become a really popular destination. I had a mother-daughter do a Mediterranean cruise together this summer, and it was just the two of them. It could be going on a trip to Nashville. Remember, you can take that contour flight from Tupelo to Nashville and have a an only child trip. It could even be a camping trip. We have clients right now who are father and son taking a camping trip or a biking trip, and that's something they want to do just the two of them. Disney or Universal, very popular. A mother-daughter, mother-son trip, you know, father-son trip to Universal, father-daughter trip to Universal. I've done all of these for just a parent and a child or two parents and a child. Could be going to the national parks. Maybe someplace that is specifically on the child's wish list. So lots of different options and lots of different budgets. So why would you do this? We talked about when you could for different special occasions, where you could go, but why? Several different reasons. One is cost. We all now know how expensive everything has gotten. And that doesn't mean that you can't still travel, but there are some ways that we have to become more creative to fit things in a budget. If we're honest, flights are really expensive, and that's one of the most expensive parts of a trip. So maybe you want to have these amazing experiences with your children, but if you have a larger family, maybe you're a family of five or six or more, you can't airfare alone, fly everyone, not to mention everything else that would cost for the trip. So instead, you want to make it a very special trip for a 
graduation where it's a father and mother and senior, or maybe it's the mom and the dad and the senior. And so you want to be able to have this special time together to connect. And that leads us into quality time, right? But before that, just the cost itself, it will be affordable to say, we can do this every graduation. We're going to have a special trip just with the graduate. It may be that it works for the entire family to go, but this gives you another option besides either we all go or none of us go. This gives another great way to be able to work in a budget that can accommodate a lot of families. So the quality time. Now, I have two boys. They're 12 and 7, London and Christian. And so since Christian's been born, our trips are, when we take with one child, we have taken with both. But as they get older, and especially maybe for a graduation trip, I do want to have this as an only child trip experience. So they get the quality time. My children, and if you have more than one child, maybe you can relate to this. My children act differently together than they do separate. Has anyone else ever experienced that? Like my boys do not act like the same two people when you get them individually versus together. When they are together, they are going to sometimes, you know, pick at each other in the back seat. You know, they're going to have their their squirmishes and they're like maybe one wants to do one thing, one wants to do another. So they're not happy. They're, they're feeling like they're competing to get our undivided attention. Whereas when we've been just with one at a time and it works for both of them the same way, the 12 year old and the seven year old makes no difference. They are so much easier to be around. Not even half, way more than that when it's just one on one because they're not fighting for our attention. They're they're not trying to talk over each other. They're not getting on each other's nerves. So yes, we love family trips, even long car rides, which I'm going to talk more about in a few weeks. We love long trips together and it's something wonderful for our family and I really encourage it. But there's are some times when I tell the boys for one reason or another, if I'm just one-on-one with them, how much I love that time one-on-one with my boys. Uh, what about interest then? What if you have children that are completely different ages? Mine are four and a half years apart, but even then that means there's going to be some things that my older one can do that my younger one can't. There are going to be some things that my younger one is still interested and excited about that the older one is not. And it can kind of bring down that excitement level. London could bring down the excitement level for Christian, whereas Christian could then get frustrated that London can do something. He's allowed to do something. When we just went to Niagara Falls, London was able to do the go-kart racing where he was a driver and Christian could not. Maybe you're going to a theme park and based on their height requirements, age requirements, one sibling can do something, the other one cannot, and it's going to be a battle that you know, or, or hurt feelings. So these are some reasons that if their interest or their ages are so different that they they don't align with a certain trip that you can let them each pick one and do them at individual times. Maybe it's something that the grandparents want to do with a grandchild and they want to have this experience where they spend the quality time with one grandchild. I have some clients that in the past that every grandchild, when they are getting ready to graduate, they do a special trip with just that grandchild. So they really get to pour into them. Again, it goes back to quality time in that case. Have I done this before with our boys? Accidentally, I have. When we were on a Mediterranean cruise, the last time we were in Europe, which was in 2019, we were doing a seven-night cruise out of Venice. And one day, we we all woke up. Christian wasn't feeling well. He did not feel like doing the excursion we had planned that day to go to Murano, Murano, some of the little islands off of the coast of Venice. Well, Logan said that he would stay with Christian because he was fine missing that excursion. And they would spend the day together, let Christian rest up and recuperate. And London and I went just the two of us. So we had an all-day excursion where we went to see glass blowing in Murano. We had lunch together. We went to Murano to see the most beautiful colored buildings and where they make lace. And so we had this bonding time together, just the two of us, in a way that we hadn't had since before he was the only child. And it was something that I still think about. And that's been five years ago. On the same trip, a few days later, we're on our cruise and we're getting ready to go to Santorini. And then London wakes up not feeling well. You know, sometimes when you travel, we've had podcast episodes about that, that when you're traveling, um, sometimes you may not feel well. And that's what happened on this trip. We were in Santorini. I was so excited to go to Santorini. Christian was feeling great. Logan's like, you know what? He was a real trooper that trip. He's like, I'm going to stay with London. I was the only one that on that whole trip that had not stopped feeling well. And you can take Christian. So Christian and I had this romantic day 
together, as romantic as you can imagine a mother and a toddler at two and a half would have. But it was the most magical day that we had together where, you know, we had snacks at the top. We got to see the, the donkeys. We took all kinds of pictures with the windmills and the beautiful white buildings with the with the blue domes. We did some souvenir shopping where he picked out something for him and for London. And that's a memory that we'll always have together. So even though it wasn't the entire trip, an option you could do is to make it special for the child on the trip. Like maybe, hopefully it's not because of sickness, like in our case, but maybe you're like, okay, this night is going to be all about this child or this day is going to be all about this child. And maybe you're all going to be going together, but maybe you let one child pick the activities or the dinner for that night. And the next night you let the other child. So there's ways you can do the only child trip, whether it's the entire trip, or part of a trip. So I hope that you've enjoyed this week. If you have any other questions or would like to see some more examples, join our Facebook group at Heather and Logan Tate, Whimsical Destinations. Whatever you do, wherever you go, I hope you make life a great adventure this week. Life is short. Take the trip, make those memories. You won't regret it. This show is made possible by JC Media LLC in Ripley, Mississippi. JC Media owns the Shark 102.3 Classic Rock FM radio station where the show is hosted and Sunbear Recording Studio where the interviews are recorded. We need your feedback and support. If you listen to the podcast on a player like iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Amazon Music, please subscribe to the show and leave us a review. We also have an email in which you can share your feedback. That email Email is theshark1023 at gmail.com. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app or stream episodes online at shark1023.com front slash podcast. Today's episode was produced by Melinda Marsalis. It was edited by Rick Williams and engineered by Chris Marsalis. The podcast technician is Joyce Gratty.